So welcome everybody. My name is Matt Anderson. I'm a professor in the physics department here. And uh, I've been thinking a lot about these online classes and approaches to online learning. And one thing that, that always bugged me about um, live presentations online was the following. If you're writing on a chalkboard and you're lecturing to the camera, then your back is to the camera half the time. If you are writing on a whiteboard, it's the same problem. Um, I wanted to turn that all around. So I wanted to be able to face the camera and write on a screen while I'm facing the camera. And that way, the students and everybody else can see all the little nuances, see exactly any mistakes I made, see where I'm thinking a little bit longer about some things and not others. And so that was the approach uh, uh, for inventing this device, uh, which we are calling Through the Looking Glass. And uh, it is essentially a transparent glass screen that is illuminated from the side. And when you write on it, it pops out very clearly. So I'll give you a little demo of performing a lecture on this sort of device. Um, I'm in physics, and so I'm a firm believer that physics should be done with pen and paper. Uh, so you don't need a whole lot of computer simulations. You don't need a whole lot of PowerPoint presentations. What you really need is pen and paper. And so this, I think, accomplishes that. All right, so let's fire it up. We have a, uh, a camera over here. It's a standard uh, SLR type camera. This is a Canon T3i. And I have it set up in movie mode. And right now we are displaying the output onto this um, uh, computer display right here. And the other thing you'll notice is there is an added mirror here, and that's to flip the image. So I don't have to write backwards on the screen. I can write normally. It will appear in the correct orientation to the audience. You could, of course, do this digitally in the computer, but this stay, saves one extra computational step. OK, so I'll give you a little lecture about um, drag racers, because I, I went to the drags recently, and it's kind of an interesting topic in my mind. And, and you can be my live studio audience. And one of the ideas that, that I have is, if you're going to present online learning, it'd be really nice to do it in front of a live studio audience. So if I have a class of 300 kids, I would say 10 of you have to come in Monday, Wednesday, and Friday and sit in my live studio audience. And then I would rotate that, that crew. And so the rest of the people would be watching at home, either synchronously or asynchronously. But the 10 that are in here with me, that's my live audience. They can ask questions. That gives us a little more of the spontaneity and the feedback. All right. So, you guys want to hit the lights and we'll try this out. Can you see me over here? Hello class, Professor Anderson here. Uh, I'd like to talk to you about uh, the drag strip. As you know, I went to the drag races recently and it's a, it's a very fascinating uh, physics subject. So, what does a dragster look like? Dragster looks like this. It's got big back wheels, little front wheels, it's got a big old engine with exhaust pipes shooting out all sorts of exhaust gas here. It's got a spoiler on the front and a spoiler on the back and the dragster accelerates down the track. So let's think for a second about the forces that are working on this dragster and then we'll talk about how they achieve such fantastic accelerations. So if I think about the forces in the X direction Let's draw our free body diagram, which we said is just a dot. The only thing propelling them down the track is the static friction between the tires and the track. Okay? Lose the static friction, they don't accelerate down the track. There is, of course, a normal force, N, from the track pushing up on the dragster, and there is the weight of the dragster, Mg, down due to gravity. So let's calculate the forces. Some of the forces in the x direction are just F sub s. That's it. That's the only force in the x direction. And that's equal to the mass times the acceleration in the x direction. Some of the forces in the y direction is N minus mg. All of that equals the mass times the acceleration in the y direction. But if it's staying on the track, which if it's a good run it should, and that's equal to zero. It doesn't accelerate up or down. And so we get N equals mg. 
But we know a little bit more about static friction. What we know about static friction is the following. Static friction can have a maximum value of mu s times the normal force, which is mu s mg. That's equal to the mass times the acceleration. And now if I equate these last two equations, look, look what happens. The m's drop right out, and I get acceleration equals mu s times g. So, you can accelerate your car as a function of that static frictional coefficient. Now, for rubber on concrete, mu s is about 1.0, which means that the fastest that you could accelerate your car is 1 g, which is pretty fast, right? 9.8 meters per second squared. At the track, however, at the drag race track, they are able to get mu s significantly higher than that they get a mu s of about 2.5. How do they get a mu s of 2.5? Well, they heat the track, they burn rubber on the track, and in between races they even spray glue onto the track to get those tires to stick. So that's pretty fast. You can accelerate at 2.5 g. But there's a problem. When we talked about dragsters, we said they go 0 to 300 miles per hour, in under four seconds. These are real numbers. We're not making those up. Zero to 300 miles per hour in under four seconds. What is that acceleration? It turns out that the acceleration of a dragster is about 5 g. Five times gravity. And yet, we just said the most you could do is two and a half times g. So somewhere we are off by a factor of two. And this is the really interesting part of this problem. Where are we off by a factor of two? I'll ask you guys. Anybody out there know? Yeah. Yes. Mr. O'Sullivan? It's a guess. It What's it? down onto the pavement. Okay. Mr. O'Sullivan said uh, it pushes down onto the pavement. What pushes down onto the, the pavement? No, the, um, These? The spoilers? Spoilers, yeah. the spoilers. That is certainly true. Absolutely true. The spoilers are a couple wings that are inverted. They are pushing down on the, on the dragster. Mm -hmm. So when you get going up to a high speed, those extra forces pushing down increase your normal force, which increases that. Absolutely true. However, you get 5G off the line even before you're up to speed. So there is no force on those spoilers yet. Where are we going wrong? What are we still missing? Okay. Ms. Atkins was wondering about the big tire versus the little tire. The big tire is really just to make sure you stick to the track. Okay, it's very wide, it's very low pressure, it's like five PSI. Okay, it's just trying to keep you stuck to the track the little tire up in front is just to keep it straight. Okay, so that's not exactly it. Any other thoughts? Mr. Lamakis? I hope the gas is coming out of the little smokestack. Aha, uh -huh. exactly right. It turns out that the exhaust here is shooting out of those exhaust pipes and forcing the car down onto the track and they run so much fuel at such a fast rate through those engines that the thrust from the exhaust pipes is roughly equal to the weight of the car, which is kind of hard to believe, but that's exactly what happens. And that's where we've gone wrong by a factor of two, and that's how you get 5G acceleration. All right, that's it for today. If you have any questions about this, come see me in office hours. Cheers. So far, the reviews from the students have been uh, incredibly positive. Um, I have done clicker questions in class where I've asked them about uh, various sources that they're getting help, and I asked them specifically about these video uh, presentations, and they said those are by far the best that they've seen. They would love it if I would post more of them. 
I think um, they really can identify with being able to do this with pen and paper, but also I think they identify with the fact that it's me. I'm in front of them lecturing during the class. I'm the one in the videos relating this information to them uh, at home.